Let's talk about the molecule called estradiol, which is the main estrogen of females. I mean, estradiol, there's three estrogens. There's estriol found in young babies. Then estradiol is found in mostly in reproductive years in women. And then you have esterone. What is usually measured and we deal with in, in, in male sexual medicine is estradiol. There is actually really only one source of estradiol, and that comes from male hormones. There are male hormones made by the adrenal gland, made by the testes. I would say about 90% of your uh, hormones or more of estradiol comes from testosterone. Therefore, when you think of estradiol, you have to think of testosterone. This is where I discussed earlier that testosterone is not like a, uh, one molecule which is doing nothing. It's a pro-hormone molecule, meaning it can go into two directions, estradiol, and dihydrotestosterone and then those molecules will go to the tissues that are recept that have receptors for estrogen and receptors for dihydrotestosterone and each like estrogen has a whole series of estrogen receptor uh, receptors they're called estrogen receptor alpha and beta in different tissues Many men get concerned that there's, they might have excess estradiol in their system. They blame everything for it. I do see men with gynecomastia. When you block the conversion of testosterone to estrogen with aromatase inhibitors, that's how you get estrogen is by condition called, or process called aromatization. Well, their gynecomastic either gets better, smaller, or their, t their, t their breast tissue is less sensitive. But uh, in some cases, you can get cured. In some cases, it's just mitigated or just you have less sensitization. Now, a very interesting paper came out by uh, Joel Finkelstein, a very good researcher from Harvard and New England Journal of Medicine a couple of months ago where he studied the effects of estrogen on men. And the two important things he came, came up with was that number one, low estrogen is not good for sexuality. You need estrogen in the brain, on the brain, to have good sexuality. So those men who use too much of these inhibitors that convert estrogen, testosterone to estrogen, can lose their sexuality. So you would, each male, how much estrogen do you need is kind of dependent upon each male. But it is something that we have to watch very carefully. A lot of doctors don't even measure estradiol. They really should because there should be a good, a good balanced ratio between testosterone, dihydrotestosterone, and estradiol. And oftentimes you can see very low estradiol and that can lead to all kinds of problems, or low dihydro or low testosterone. So they all have to be in balance. The other thing that uh, message that Finkelstein has to say was that uh, those men with re really low estrogens seem to gain, gain fat more than those with higher estrogens. Well, that makes sense because estrogen only can come from testosterone. And we know that testosterone is helpful in uh, weight loss. I'd like to talk a little bit about uh, the cardiovascular system. We know that estrogen is a vasodilator. Some, some years ago, people used to use estrogen to dilate the vascular tree to maybe treat uh, myocardial infarction and other problems. But now we know that's not a good idea because too much estrogen can be thrombotic. It is thrombotic in women who smoke and take birth control pills. However, if you go the opposite direction and you, somebody takes a anabolic steroid, which is not natural, like a Winstrol, Decadurabulin, and others, those molecules don't convert to estrogen. Now, the consequence of that, which is really bad, is that dihydro HDL cholesterol is good for you, and you need that to remove plaque cholesterol. And when you use those agents I just described, you will block at least about 50% of your HDL good cholesterol drops. And I tell patients that, you know, I, I can see that on their laboratory tests that they've been fooling around with what I consider unnatural, unnecessary hormones, steroids, which are bad for them. So in the long term, they may say, well, I feel great, I'm all pumped up and I've got big muscles and everything else. 
um, energetic, but in the long run, if you keep doing this, you're going to have premature cardiovascular disease and maybe premature heart attack. So just 10, 20 years from down the road, you might be having a heart attack. So the next topic in terms of relationship of testosterone to our overall health in terms of men is the issue of osteoporosis. Osteoporosis it can be associated with low testosterone and low testosterone is associated with low estrogen. So I have a 50 year old man who was found to have low testosterone and when we did a bone density he had extremely low bone density. He, and when you, have low, low, when you have bad osteoporosis, you can get a fracture by doing almost nothing. We call low impact fractures. So the therapy of this man was to give him agents which, like testosterone, out to, which build bone. And the difference between estrogen and estradiol and bone health is that estrogen doesn't build bone. It just stops you from losing bone. People, many people don't recognize that. Whereas testosterone has a more anabolic bone growth stimulating effect, which is healthy. So in my older men, I don't like them to have low estrogen levels. And I, even in younger men who may have a predilection to osteoporosis, which is a genetic family history is one. Number two would be smoking. Uh, three would be use of androgens in the past and other conditions like use of prednisone for asthma, allergies, and so on. Now lastly on the issue of estrogen is the fact of uh, the immune system. I've found over time there are some men are more sensitive to estrogen if they have an autoimmune disease such as rheumatoid arthritis, plaque psoriasis, uh, vitiligo, Hashimoto's, and others and they are highly sensitive to excess estrogens. They have to be monitored more closely that they don't get too much estrogen and not too little. But there is a connection between estrogens and autoimmune disease. It's found this autoimmune disease I just mentioned and others like lupus are more found in women than men. 70% of all autoimmune disorders are in women. But those men who have autoimmune disorders Half are, I find are very sensitive to the estrogens. Therefore, you have to watch them very closely and uh, not to flare the, up their uh, rheumatoid arthritis and all the symptoms that go along with it. I'm sure you must have questions about all of the different uh, topics I've discussed and really, I think a lot of it's quite complicated. So if you have any questions, please email me at k-u-l-l-i-s-m-d at gmail.com. You can go to my website, drcarlisulis.com also, and I do like to correspond with patients if they have questions. It's a learning experience on both sides, so please don't be afraid to send me an email, and I'll try to get back to you. Thank you.